Number 65. Joseph Priestley first prepared pure oxygen by heating mercuric oxide, HGO. And then they give us a balanced equation. So now letter A, it says, outline the steps necessary to answer the following question. What volume of O2 at 23 degrees Celsius and 0.975 atm is produced by the decomposition of 5.36 grams of HGO? And then obviously answer the question. Okay, so we're going to try to answer the question. And from there, you know, we'll outline the steps that's necessary. So the first thing is, this is the first question in which they give us a balanced equation for the gas chapter. So now I'm going to write it. So I have two HGOs. Now in this case, do I care about the solids, liquids, or gases? No, because we're not doing equilibrium. So I'm not even going to pay attention to that. Okay. Now I like to list out everything that I have for this uh, equation. Now the question is asking, what volume of O2? So that's this guy right? What volume of O2? So specifically, we're looking for the volume of this one. And they're giving us a lot of other things, right? What volume of, two, of O2 at 23 degrees Celsius? So I now have more information. I got a T value. Temperature was 23 degrees Celsius and a pressure, right? ATM is a pressure. So I have a P value of 0 0.975 ATM. And then they tell us that we decomposing it from 5.36 grams of HDO. So I have this one, right? 5.36 grams of this. Now, we want to answer the question for O2, specifically the volume. Now, run through all the formulas that we've been going through in this chapter. And if you guys have been on the playlist, you know, you could always go back to those questions just to see the formulas. But we have one volume, we have one temp, we have one pressure. Uh, no, no sets, so it's not going to be the combined gas law. So it's pretty much going to be the ideal gas law, which is this formula right here, PV equals NRT. And maybe I will, let's see, maybe I'll put this a little bit over here. Now, if we're looking for the volume, that means that this has to be X. And remember, this is the volume of O2. Everything for this is has to be O2's numbers. And we have the pressure of 0 0.975 ATM. So that's good. And remember, all of these units are locked into that R value, which is 0 0.0821, right? The units for the R value is ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So that's why the pressure has to be in ATM. The volume that comes out is gonna be in liters now, we need moles and Kelvin, right? The temperature, capital T, has to be in Kelvin, but it's like every single time. <laughs> they're all, for this chapter at least, they're gonna give it to you in Celsius. So we have to first know what this is in Kelvin, but that's easy, right? 23 degrees Celsius, all you have to do is just plus 273 to get the Kelvin, right? So 23 plus 273 is 296 Kelvin. Okay, cool. So we have the pressure, we have the R value, we have the temp, we're looking for the V, so that means that we should have the N. And N, remember, is the number of moles. And if you're talking specifically about the volume of O2, those moles have to be of O2, but I'm looking at all my lists down here and I don't see anything. Oh, that's why they give us information for another compound. This is bringing back good memories. Stoichiometry, the true stoichiometry of going from one compound to another. This is like in maybe, I don't know, four chapters back, five chapters back. So in essence, remember, we have to go from 5.36 grams of HGO and we got to get to the moles of O2. And remember, in order to do that, you got to go from grams of HGO to moles of HGO. So all of this should be like a refresher. 
This is everything that we learned from before. This is the new stuff, plugging it into the formula. But this is going back to that stoichiometry um, chapter. So let's go for it. 5.36 grams of HGO. And maybe I'll put that down at the bottom, right? Grams of HGO. We need to go to moles of HGO because we can only convert from moles to moles. That's using the balanced equation. So grams of HGO on the bottom and moles of HGO up on top. This is the periodic table. Mole to gram of the same compound is using the periodic table, PT. So one mole of HGO is whatever it is on the periodic table. So periodic table out. We got one HG, 200.6 plus one oxygen, which is 16. So 216. 0.6, cancel that out. Let's keep going because we're not at the the right unit yet. So don't don't get worried. Just keep running through it. Times by a ratio. Throw the unit now that you don't want. Mole of HGO on the bottom, and now the mole of O2 goes on the top. And a mole to mole relationship of different compounds. That's the balanced equation. That's the coefficients. So there was a two in front of the HGO and nothing in front of the O2. Remember, that means that there is one of them. So one mole of O2 for every two moles of HGO, cancel that out. And now we're left with moles of O2. And that's what we needed. We needed the N number. So 5.36 divided by 216.6 divided by two. This is not the final answer. So try not to round it. Uh, 0 0.01, I'm just going to give it a few decimals after. 1, 2, 3, 7. That's good enough. And that's moles of O2. And now we have this value. That number is going to be the 0 0.01237. So now let's use everything that we have and solve for that volume. So maybe I'll just put it over here. So P is 0 0.975 times V, which is X, equals the moles that we just found, 0 0.01237 times by the R value, 0 0.0821 times by the temp, which was the one in Kelvin, which was 296. Solving for X, I just have to basically divide each side by the pressure number. And then we're good to go. 0 0.975, 0 0.975, this gets canceled. And we're left with just X. And X, remember, is the volume. And that's what we wanted. So let's see. 0 0.01237 times 0 0.0821 times 296 divided by 0 0.975. And looks like three sig figs, so... X equals 0 0.308. And remember, the volume coming out of the formula is liters. So 0 0.308 liters of O2, because we're specifically answering just for O2. And that's it. Awesome. What do you think? Hopefully this helped. It was just basically using our stoichiometry knowledge from previous chapters to just adding it now to this formula. That's why stoichiometry, it's never going to leave. <laughs> Even in Chem 2, you will see it. Yikes. But that's okay. I'm here every step of the way. But I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great day, and I'll see you in later lessons. Bye.